successful group, research group uh, uh, within uh, Switzerland, uh, Western uh, Switzerland, uh, uh, sorry, Eastern Switzerland, and uh, Italy and Austria. Uh, and I want uh, Ethel, Robert, Hitler, and uh, Will Steiner. Okay, then please show us the latest news of racial ecology in South Africa. So I'm uh, the last barrier between you and the coffee break. I hope to, to stay in time. Uh, racial archaeology in South Kilo. I would like to show you quickly um, six of our most interesting sites discovered in the last uh, 25 years. Um, <coughs> starting in late um, Paleolithic and coming up to modern conflict archaeology of World War I. So, for our international guests, here in Innsbruck, South Europe is not so far away. We are just on uh, the southern side of the main Alpine Ridge. And um, okay, I will show you first four sites, very interesting sites. Around one of our main find spots is the Schnalstal, the Schnalz Valley, this line here. And since the discovery of the Iceman in 1991 here in York, the Schnalstal was uh, one of our main uh, spots of interest. We have uh, done very long-term and very detailed um, research on the life in an in a alpine valley from the Mesolithic until the Middle Ages in modern time. We have discovered additionally three new sites in, uh, after 1991. It's the Gurgler Eisjok, the Trinkerkogel and the Landrubenjok. And let's start with the Gurgler Eisjok. It's the earliest site and also the most uh, recently discovered. You can see here the site um, photograph just uh, one month ago. You can see the glacier and um, the, find, the find spot is here on this um, quite flat area. We have a concentration of about 50 finds, 50 wooden finds in an area of just uh, about 30 meters of uh, diameter. So uh, let me show you just uh, some pictures of the finds. The most interesting, because of his age, is this one here. It's the snowshoe. We have um, um, actual dating. It's dated by a radiocarbon method between 3080 and 3070 BC. This notion is made of birch wood and it was discovered already in 2003 by the cartographer Simone Bartolini. He took it away in his office, uh, let it there for 12 years uh, after rethinking on, 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 on the thing, and uh, then he brought it to, to Bolson to our headquarters and it was dated and it is uh, about 5,000. 6,000 years old. The shoe consists of an oval shape, so it's birch wood, and uh, strands of birch uh, tied across it. So I show you some other pictures. This is from a late medieval sledge, also concentrated on this fine spot. This is again a snowshoe, just some uh, some detailed photos. You can see a very well state of preservation. And just to stop here, this is another component of this late medieval sledge, about 1450. Uh, this is the this is the other um, um, the other part of the range. We have the temptations, we have the snowshoe with late um, late Neolithic, and we have this sledge with late Middle Ages. The, the other finds, about 40 pieces, still we didn't know uh, the location because they were uh, recovered and rescued just one month ago. So that's all for Google Eisenhower. Let's go on. Diesenjoch, 
the site of the Iceman after 1991 was the theater of very detailed excavations and very detailed research, but like in many other places, the topography has changed very much uh, after 25 years with the ice melting. And after uh, 2015, when hikers um, went to the headquarters of the department, uh, telling us that there were um, organic materials on the surface of the site, uh, the department decided to start an active monitoring campaign. So we have been there last year and this year uh, trying to see if new things are coming out. This is just uh, the digital terrain model and um, the Iceman and its main um, components of this equipment. And one of the first results are three pieces of wood nearby um, with some tool marks, they are still dated, we are waiting for datation and we hope that they are maybe aim also from this, uh, the same period. Uh, the other thing is um, photogrammetic uh, working on the side, so uh, we are trying to, to measure a high detailed uh, DTM of all the photo, trying to expand this step by step in the next years. A very interesting site, also discovered by hikers um, about seven years ago, is the Langhoomjoch. The Langhoomjoch is a pass between the Schnalstal and the Machatal, so uh, a local connection between these two valleys. See here the situation. The concentrations of finds are, first of all, here on the main pass plateau, you can see here our tents around this year, and then coming down here with the slope, this ice field. But not only the pass itself, but also the, the ways uh, leading to the pass until 800 meters uh, distantly from the main finds, but we have found, we have found uh, different uh, wooden tools and uh, wooden finds. So here's just a map of the situation. Uh, we have been there three times, 2013, 2015, 2016. You see the first campaign in 2013 trying to document over the whole area. And then in 2013 following the shrinking ice, the blue dots. And this year we've been able to increase the density of findings in the all known, already known area. You can see the ice, this is the situation of the ice just a uh, month ago. So, again, have a look on the findings. Um, the finds are predominantly uh, of wood, wooden parts, many of them are boards, but also branches and poles. We are uh, on uh, more than 200 pieces until now. The most interesting parts um, finds are this wooden bed hook, where uh, typolo typologically we think it's from the late Copper Age, and then from last year, several concentrations of leather finds. Some we didn't know, we still didn't know. We have no location for these finds. It seems but it's sure some part of clothing of a shoe and uh, we have still to understand. Together with some human bones, uh, food bones, and uh, we are now this, uh, this time now trying to understand what it could mean. The boards are very interesting because uh, with the tool marks and the comparable finds, we think that uh, these are roof shingles of a late Bronze Age hut. They are made in a, in a way which was applied in alpine environment until uh, the beginning of the 20th century. This year, um, roof is like that. So we have in the same in the same way boards um, um, up to two meters long, and we are quite sure that this have been uh, the covering of uh, some roof. Uh, this year, we have been able for the first time maybe to document um, a plate form nearby 
where we think it could be uh, have been suitable for such uh, application for such a hub. You can see here also still some pieces of wood on the ground. <coughs> That's all for Langrobenjoch. One interesting site nearby is the Trinker Kogel. Also discovered by a um, private person was the veterinary, veterinarian Helmut Hufler. It's here on, with the prison, the sign by the image. Um, he reported to the, to the department that in 2009 he has discovered the skeletons of more um, of, uh, numerous individuals of ibises, and we went up in 2012, discovering first of all that we have not been on South Tyrolean territory but on Austrian territory. But with the permission of the Austrian Federal uh, Monument Office, we have done the job, and we have documented uh, the situation and uh, rescued the materials. You, how you can see here on the overview map, we have three concentrations of numerous individuals uh, with um, bone, horn, coat, and dung. They've been dated and they are uh, between 1500 and 1300 BC, more or less. Just a look on the situation on the excavation. You can see here the fragments on the surface mixed with a layer of uh, glacial fluvial uh, sediments and all uh, this whole complex is in a slow moving uh, downhill and in a couple of years it will be covered again by materials coming down from, uh, from the top of the mountain. That's all for Schnallstahl. <coughs> Let's have a short look on the east of our region. It's very near of the, of the sites we have uh, seen before in the last presentation. Gamsvik in Joch. Um, it was discovered by um, the host of the nearby situated uh, mountain head, Gottfried Leitgeb, in 1992. So maybe sensitized after, after the, the finding of the Iceman the year after. And um, he found it uh, just a couple of meters um, distantly from his hat. In 1994, he, he, he found textile and leather objects, and in 1994, he discovered uh, even uh, again other objects nearby. And now we have a complex uh, composed by this pair of socks, two pairs of these gaiters, wooden gaiters, and uh, some other leather fragments. But we think that they are part of, of shoes. They have been dated again with the radiocarbon metal, and they are in the early, uh, from the early Iron Age, so between 800 and 500 BC. So, <coughs> with the Gans Joch, I'm leaving ancient times to come to another site, the last site I would like to present you today. It's the Königspitze. It's an example for modern conflict archaeology. Because here, this mountain group is the Optlache Regale group, is the highest mountain in South Tyrol, uh, up to uh, almost 4,000 meters. It was a theater of uh, heavy, heavy fighting between Italian and Austro-Hungarian troops uh, from 1915 to 1918. And it's the, the same story like in ancient times. The ice covered all these structures from the First World War. And we have now a, a perfectly preserved uh, situation. How you can see here, this is the top of the Königspitze. Um, there was a permanent occupation, winter and summer, of these summits. And if you look here, this black dot here is the barrack, the Austro-Hungarian barrack, on the summit of the Königsberg. We have a photo of 1918. You can see the barrack was built inside the glacier. And in 2001, because of global warming, the outside part of the glacier crashed down. And nowadays we have this barrack 
on the top of the north face and it's in danger to crash down also in, uh, during the next years. How you can see also on the photo, the inside of the bark is completely full with ice. So we think that we have there a time capsule which uh, preserved the situation of November 3, 1980. Last year we did the first, uh, first campaign documenting the, the outside area around the barrack and we, uh, we have collected already some findings. I am just showing you some photos of these findings, the um, very well state of preservation of these findings, together with the a little bit difficult situation of work on the site. This is, this is where the barrack is. We are on 3,860 meters. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. As you can see here, it's just, uh, it looks like new. It's 100 years old. Here is Charles Day. This is a look inside. We are already working now this year trying to melt the inside of the, of the barrack and trying to bring home the findings. So, here is the model of the barrack from last year. You can see here again, inside completely full. This is the door, the entrance door. Uh, there are about 100 uh, cubic meters of ice we have to melt. And we, we are quite sure to find the whole personal equipment of about 30 soldiers and two officers. And we, we hope uh, to find also documents, personal documents, diaries, and so on. So I am at the end. And for us, it's uh, just from the last thing important to say that all these six sites discovered in the last 25 years in our region have been discovered by a private person, by hikers, by mountaineers, by people interested in walking. And without them, we, we have we never had this, uh, this opportunity to find these sites because uh, in, the, in the department there are three or four archaeologists. They have many things to do on the bottom of the valleys. And uh, we think that it's a very good idea to do sen uh, sensibilization with the hikers because we have an increasing number of uh, uh, people reporting uh, findings, reporting strange situations on the villagers every summer. Many of them are not interested. But we think uh, this is the right way, and maybe in the discussion we can go on to speak about that. Thank you. So thank you for uh, watching. We have uh, time to coffee break uh, for more than 20 minutes, so we can start with a little discussion. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a, a question to maybe all the speakers. Uh, some of the projects, and I think this is probably something that's going to come up the whole conference, but these predictive models, some of you have worked with it, some of you not. It's already been mentioned that a lot of the fine spots are actually not find, found by, by archaeologists. Are those worth doing? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Uh, I've worked uh, with predictive modeling uh, already 10 years ago with the Austrian Academy of Sciences in another project, but always on a high altitude. It's, it's a possibility if you have very uh, large areas, I think. Because on, on a small, small scale, every person from, from there, every local, knows 10 times better than every model what, uh, where we have to look. So where the grandfathers went, crossing the mountains and so on. If you have huge territory, if you try to do the first step, the first, to, to get the first idea, I think um, predictive modeling is the way, but, uh, and this was my experience, predictive modeling is, uh, depends on the researcher who is putting in information. So it's not objective. If I, if, the reason I can I tried it I tried it I um, modified the input so long until I get the result I would like to have. 
I have to say it's not so. But we, we in, the, in that occasion, we tried to understand it uh, methodologically. So it wasn't, we, were not, we have nothing to prove, and we just tried to, to find out how it works. But this research is 10 years old, so that's, that's my opinion. Okay. I didn't get to when that hot one finished, so it was actually covered in ice. But is there a possibility that there is still mummified bodies inside? Um, no, I don't think so. So the last day of war um, was like that. There was a telephone call from the command saying the war is over, get away from there as, as, far, as fast as you can. And I think everyone take his, his back and went away. So no, I, I included for 99%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.